It's edge to be. It's obvious. There's no doubt. So how do I know thick or thin? Well, and, and this is going to be very vague here, but it's, it's true. It's essentially what I've always said. Once you have your perception, once you have your perception, you just look down the middle of the ball. I'm being very vague here. You look down the middle of the ball, and if I were to imagine what would happen if I were to shoot down that line, that tells me the shot is thick. Therefore, the shot requires an inside pivot, alignment. That will take me to a slight overcut past the center of the pocket. So let's let's look at a 30. Let's look at a 30 from the outside. Now, those of you that are familiar with CT, you know that a 30 from the outside can interchange with a 15 from the inside. But let's say I look at a 30 from the outside. There can be no doubt. Edge to B. There can be no doubt that that's my solution. It's obvious. It's right there in front of me. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Now, there can be no doubt that I chose the correct solution. There can be no doubt. If I were to choose A, which is the 45, it doesn't look right. It's not obvious. And there can be no doubt that I'm going to miss the ball by a mile. So, if I look at this 30 set up here, and I stand behind the shot and look at the edge of the cue ball to be, or get my perception, let's say, and I look at that line, the middle of the cue ball, that the perception gives me, and I shoot down that line, or look down that line, that's what the perception looks like. It's thin to the pocket, which tells me, automatically, that I have to thicken the shot so I come in from the outside. So, that's just a little bit of a glimpse into, the, in, into how easy it is to recognize a perception and how simple it is to determine whether a shot is thick or thin. You see, when you look at a shot, when you look at a shot, this 15 outside, when you look at a shot and you're, you're thinking of thick and thin, and perhaps you're not immersed in the center edge aiming, mean, don't think that that thin is just a, a, a smidgen on one side of the pocket or the other. This, this thin relationship on this 15 is well to the outside of this pocket on the right. So it's not... So when I, I set up and look at this, there's my 15. It's obvious. Well, if I want to know what the relationship is to the pocket, I should look at the middle of the ball. That's what I said in DVD and that's what I said in DVD too. It hasn't changed. Now, as I go forward, it's going to get much, much easier. To, how easy is this with a little training? But when I look at this shot, this is what it technically looks like. Once again, I've got that, it's, it's like a huge miss. It's not, it's, it, it sticks out at you. So, it's going to get a lot easier. As easy as that technically is, I'm more refined. Now, I, I do want to call your attention to one thing. This is how Hull's three-angle document. It's been on the internet for 20 years. I have a wall of books in my room from floor to ceiling that covers about, oh, I don't know, a third of the wall. So there's a lot of books there. Various topics. A lot of pool books, obviously. I wouldn't trade every pool book 
I wouldn't, tr I wouldn't, you could have all my pool books and I'll take this one sheet right here. That's my point. You know, there's many a times, and I told my wife this just the other day, I was looking at that wall of books and I said, you know what? There's not one book in that monstrosity of a collection there that tells me what I want to know about how to really line up to a cue ball and an object ball. There's not one book in there that tells me what to see. I was showing this to a professional player one time, Senator Ed Jamie. He looked at me and said, why would I want to do that? I just get down and do this. I stopped right there. I didn't go any further. That was it. That's pretty much the attitude that I'm going to adopt going forward. If you're interested, great. If you're not, that's great too. So, why would you want to do that? I just, I just do this. Do what? So anyway, this is Houle's three-angle document. I put together, and I have a chapter entitled in my book, 13 Critical Links. Houle's document is but one slice of those 13 critical links. I read this document many times, and what did it do? It went right over my head. Not the first time, but the second time. <laughs> the third time, and probably many, many, many additional times up to, I don't know, 25 or 30 or 40 before I started Connecting, But you see, the problem is that there are gaps in this document. The gaps are purposeful. So, during my course of working with perception and the material that I had available, this is one piece of the pie. I had other things that I put together, but this was an important piece. But you know what? I went to the table. I went to the table and I tried everything out in every way that you can imagine. You have no clue what I went through to solve this. The different things that I did. Well, I didn't have a manual. I didn't have a road map. So I was forced to go into every nook and cranny that you possibly could in order to rule in or rule out. It was fun. My journey has been fun. I wouldn't change one single thing about it in any kind of way. A very strong achievement in my life. As far as educational, without a doubt, the, the strongest achievement in my life. I've spent more time resolving centered edge aiming than I spent with my total work in four years of college and as well as my master's degree. I spent more work, not even close, I spent more work putting the book together than I did for four years of college and a fifth year for graduate work. It's not been easy. But you know, beyond any doubt, I took this to the table. There can be no doubt. But here's what I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine your favorite naysayer. Your favorite hater. Can you picture in your mind this scenario? They're at the table. They're looking. They're lining up. They're pivoting. They're setting up different shots. They're looking. They're lining up. They're pivoting. They're studying. No. You can't picture it. You can't picture it. Not if you're truthful to yourself. And that brings me to the definition of a naysayer. A hater. A hater, a naysayer, is a quitter. They quit. 
there's a chance, a, a real good chance, that your favorite hater, naysayer, read this. And they looked at it and they said, nope, that can't be, that doesn't work, that's caca, that's mumbo jumbo. They never made it to the table, they quit. Folks, we're talking, the people that, the people that are after me are quitters. They're not trying, they're not trying to figure this out, they're, they're, they're working to disprove it. To discredit, to destroy, and and it goes beyond the system. I catch it as well. Whatever works, do it. If we call Mr. Shuffet a delusional old man, then if it if it can get us a little bit of traction, let's do it. If we can portray him as a ripoff artist, that might get something done. Let's do it. With success comes naysayers and haters. That's why that I'm okay with having them. Because if I didn't have them, then I wouldn't be successful. That's, that's a done deal. I'm glad to have the target on my back. I'm glad to have the target on center edge aiming. I didn't set out for either one of those. It's just a natural unfolding of success. With success comes haters and naysayers. That can be defined as quitters that looked at this in some way but couldn't do it, so what they'd like to do is to see me quit. It's way too late for that. All that's left is to, diminish, is to diminish it. That ball didn't go right over the millimeter of center pocket. He moved the ball a half of an inch. He's talking about throw. Ooh, that's a fuzzy issue. Throw. My goodness. Center to edge aiming gives me this shot and a slight overcut to center. I mean, Pat Johnson will tell you that that is a wonderful lineup. That is a desirable lineup. To be able to line up, move around, and get into an overcut position. Even from the noser approach. But with center edge aiming, you just see the shot, you line up, and you're in that position. Well, this has been an interesting video. I enjoy doing these videos. I'm a, uh, a teacher that was in the classroom 30 years, technically 34 years if you count some of my subbing days, which were significant after I retired. Uh, even after 30 years of teaching, I didn't quite have it out of my system, so I was in one school building for 30 years. So. When I retired, I had the opportunity to work in a, in, a, in a new building with a different age group, and I, I enjoyed that, getting to see something a little bit differently, so that I could totally get it out of my system. And I, I, I enjoyed my years as a teacher, and you know, as I'm presenting and teaching here, it gives me a break from my book work, a much-needed break at times, so that I can revisit something that I once... Uh, uh, was very passionate about in a very different way than Poole. So it's sort of like a merging of the two. I was a teacher in education and I'm, I'm a teacher here but with a different topic and a, a different uh, uh, population. So it's, it's th this is good for me. I, I appreciate the opportunity to share some things before I finally get to the point that I'm ready to release my book and do the truth series. So thank you once again for your attention and your time towards looking at uh, what, I, what it is that I have to say. Thanks.